Maxxis puts another Sim notch in its Sim belt with its latest entry in the Sim series, SimTown. SimTown is basically Sim City for kids 8 to 12 years old. Instead of wide scale zoning, the player gets to place individual homes, businesses, and so on. It's a more personal micromanagement approach to the Sim City idea. The design of SimTown is almost identical to Sim City 2000 using the same isometric design and grid structure. All of the tools are represented as icons on the left side of the screen, and all of the tool sub-choices are on the bottom of the screen. So if the player chooses to build a house, all of the house types are shown at the bottom. Kids shouldn't have any problem with this interface and its simple point-and-click style. The icons are easy to understand. To place a building, all the player has to do is point where on the screen they want to place it. The only problem they might have is trying to build roads and other stuff behind buildings since there's no function to make the buildings disappear. Basic gameplay stays true to the other SimCity games in that there's no winning or losing. The player places different types of businesses and landscapes wherever they want in hopes of making the town grow. There's a wide variety of building types to use which should help keep a kid's attention. But the player can't just build what they want wherever they want. Each building has a certain use and a certain amount of thought and consideration must go into the placement of each structure. Helping keep the player informed of the town's needs is the local newspaper. If unemployment is a problem, the paper will tell the player, but it's up to the player to decide how to solve the problem. As you might see, the player will have to learn a bit of business theory to successfully play SimTown, but the game never tries to out and out teach this stuff. Through practical learning and trial and error, the player will intuitively learn the business theories which drive an economy. SimTown involves a lot more than just building a town. The natural resources that the town depends on must be managed as well. The resource screen shows the player the status of the town's water, crops, trees, air, and recycling plants. The graphic interface shows the player the status of the resources in size and quality rather than just in number amounts. This is a great idea since it helps make it easier to understand the impact of decisions when the player can see the crops grow when money is put into that resource. Each month, the player receives credits which go into the management of these resources. Whenever anything is placed in SimTown, a certain amount of resources is required to maintain it. The player must learn how to grow within their budget and not grow too fast. A panel of advisors keeps the player updated on the status of the town's resources, whether the water supply is adequate or if the air is clean. Thrown into all of this is the Echo Villain, who comes around every now and then and tries to steal the player's resources. Until this villain is caught, the player will be unable to grow any more of the stolen resource. SimTown's main strength is the ability to explore the town that's built. The player can zoom in on their town and click on special parts of each of the buildings called Fun Spots. <laughs> You're talking about Fun Spots. <laughs> hey buddy, watch it. This is a kid's game. Anyway, whenever one of these spots is clicked on, a fun little animation will occur. I especially enjoyed the popcorn popping in the glass dome of the futuristic house. The designers really got it right with this feature. It allows the game to become a learning toy rather than just some dry simulation. The player can also design their own special character to exist in SimTown. After choosing whether the character is a boy, girl, woman, or a man, they're given a name, favorite food and activity, color of clothes, and what to say when they're happy or sad. I just wish there were more types of each character to choose between. There's only one boy, one girl, one woman, and one man to choose between. Once you create this character, there doesn't seem to be much you can do with it. There's not much interactivity other than reading the diary of what the character does from day to day. This feature does allow the player to get more drawn into the game though, watching their sim do things like get a house and a job. Another great feature of SimTown is the ability to print out the town in color or black and white, depending on the printer. The whole town can be printed out, or you can zoom on a section and print that out. But the real fun is the ability to print in coloring book format. The town is printed only in outline, so the printout can be colored in. I love it. There was never anything this cool when I was growing up. Overall, SimTown is a great game that kids are going to love. If they can only keep the grown-ups from playing it all the time. But the brilliance of something like SimTown is not that it's linear like a paint-by-number scheme. There's an infinite number of combinations and possibilities available to build a town. It's colorful and educational as well as entertaining. And all of the little hidden surprises will make for a lot of fun. If you've got a kid that's 8 to 12 years old, SimTown, that's a great program.